Hey everybody, welcome back to the final video in this Power of Filters series, where we dive into each filter individually and discuss why we should use the filter, how to use the filter, and what photos they work best on. So we're going to continue on here and move on to the last 10 filters in Photo Raw 2020. So let's jump into Photo Raw and let's get started. All right, so to start off with the Power of Filters Part 3, we're going to begin with this photograph here. And because this video is all about filters, we're not going to talk too much about the Develop tab and our tone and color. All I did for this photograph is I went and I clicked AI Auto. So this is Manual. This is AI Auto. And then I went down and I modified my temperature by just pulling it down to cool it off a bit. So that's at normal, and then I pulled it down about negative 28, just like that, just to cool it down a bit and remove some of those warm tones on the model. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, I have this photograph. And we can start with the filters. I'll head into the effects tab here. I'll add a filter. And we're on to this third row here. And we're going to start with sharpening. So sharpening adds sharpness to your photos to compensate for a moving subject, a slightly out of focus camera, or for an illustrative effect. So I'll just click on sharpening. And sharpening is a filter that immediately applies a look to your shot if I zoom in here and I turn this filter off and on, you can see that it's immediately sharpening up and adding detail to my photograph. So I'll click in here so I can see what is going on inside this filter. So inside of the sharpening filter, I'd recommend starting out by just modifying your type first. Now with these three types, uh, they all have basically different sliders in them that you can use to modify the sharpening in your photo. So this first one we have high pass. Now high pass is kind of the most basic way to sharpen. You have two sliders here. We have halo and we have a mount. Now with this sharpening filter, if you're not sure what one of these slider does, you can just hover over it and it will give you kind of a basic description of that slider. So this halo slider sets the sharpening radius. I like to think of this as your uh, small to large detail slider. So if I have this at about 20 or 30, this is going to be more of those small areas of detail on my photo. Now we have amount, and this is going to be the amount of sharpening. This is basically how much detail or sharpening you want in your shot. So if I pull this all the way up to 100, and I turn this off and on, you can see it's adding in a ton of sharpness, but it's only applying it to those really fine, minute details in my frame. So if I pull up on my halo, you can see now it's sharpening those larger details on the shot. If we pull those, the halo slider back down, now it's just focused on those minor small details. If we have the halo way up, now it's more focused on the larger details. So that halo slider is basically determining the size of the area that you're trying to sharpen. And then we have amount, which is the amount of the sharpening. Now with any of these types, we can protect our tones in our shot. We can protect our shadows, our highlights, and our skin, which is our midtones by just pulling up on any of these sliders. So let's just pull this up all the way here to about, or not all the way, to about 60, and then we have our amount all the way. And let's say we want to protect our skin tones. And the skin tones on this shot are going to be a lot of the kind of gray areas in here on her face, on the train, and uh, basically anywhere on this photograph where there's some middle gray. So let's pull up on this skin slider. And it's a little bit fine and not too drastic. But if I pull this up and pull it down, see how it's protecting those midtones and her skin? I can even do it to the shadow. So if I want to protect the shadow tones, I can pull up on that. And now it's trying to protect the shadow tones in my shot from any of that detail. And then I can pull up on my highlights. And that will protect, you guessed it, the highlights. So those bright areas in here, that's just protecting those areas from that sharpening. So you can use these areas, this protect area, to protect any areas that you don't want that sharpening to be applied to. So that's your high pass filter. We then have progressive. And progressive is a little bit different. There's three different sliders now. We have amount, which is the amount of sharpening you're adding to your photograph. Let's pull this all the way up to 100. We then have detail. And detail is controlling the amount of small details within your shot. So if I pull this all the way up, this is going to incorporate more of a structure or uh, if you're familiar with the dynamic contrast filter, it's going to incorporate more of that small detail into your frame. I like to think of this as kind of your structure slider. And then we have threshold. 
So if I pull up on my threshold slider, this is going to make the sharpening strictly be applied to the edges in my photograph. So I can kind of use this threshold slider to either remove or add in sharpening to my uh, edges of my shot. So if I have this all the way down at zero, it's basically applying all of the detail that I've, I've brought in with these two top sliders. But I can focus that detail more onto the edges in my shot by just pulling up on this threshold slider. So that's at five, this is at zero. So I'm just gonna, let me pull this up all the way, this detail up all the way. And then I'll pull my threshold down. It's very, uh, very small details that you can notice, but if I pull this up a little bit, see how it's removing the sharpening? Pull it down, adding it in. So progressive is a very minute type of sharpening on your shot. It doesn't do a whole lot. Um, I would recommend using progressive if you're looking to sharpen up portraits because you can add in a whole lot of it and it won't kind of muddy or crunch up your shot. And the next type we have is unsharp mask. So unsharp mask is similar to uh, high pass and progressive kind of combined. So we have our halo slider here, which is, again, the sharpening radius, radius or the size of the detail that you want to sharpen. So if I pull this up to you know, 40 or so and I pull my amount up, you can see it's basically targeting those larger areas of detail on my shot. Now amount's going to determine the large or small amounts of detail, or the halo, sorry, is going to determine the large or small amounts of detail, while the amount is going to determine how much of that sharpening to add. And then again, we have this threshold slider down here. And that's going to do the same thing that it did in the progressive type, which is if we pull this down, it's going to apply more of the sharpening because there's no threshold. But we can use this threshold slider to strictly apply the sharpening to the edges in our shot. So if I pull this up, you can see it's removing it from these middle areas, kind of these middle mid-tones. And it's strictly applying it to the kind of those edges of contrast. Anywhere there's kind of harsh contrast in my shot, this is where that that threshold slider comes in and you can kind of play with it to uh, selectively apply that sharpening into areas where there's not so much contrast. So now if I turn this off and on, I'm really targeting those uh, edges in my shot and so it's kind of bringing out just the fine detail uh, in the photograph and it's not bringing out any of the larger detail because I have this threshold slider so low. And with the sharpening filter, I would recommend applying it selectively, either with a masking brush or a gradient. So let's just go into our type here. I'll choose high pass, pull down my halo. Um, actually, let's go to unsharp mask. And I'll make it pretty small. Let it be all applied. Boom. So now let's say we don't want this sharpening applied to kind of the, the, the blurred areas of the shot, kind of that motion-y subway in the background. We only want it applied to our model here. So I'm just going to hit B on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my masking brush. It's set to paint out already. And now I'll just paint this out from behind the model. Just like that. Oh, I can increase my opacity. There we go. So I'll just paint this out from behind the model here. Not too worried about her legs. And so now if I turn this filter off and on, you can see it's only bringing out the sharpness and detail in our model here, and it's leaving everywhere else where there's a bunch of motion and blur nice and soft. So that's the uh, sharpening filter, a really awesome filter for when you're looking to add in uh, some detail or some sharpening to a photograph that may be a little bit soft or you're just looking to go in and increase the focus of a photo. So let's move on to the next photograph and the next filter. I'll add a filter. And now we're gonna talk about skin retouching. So skin retouching filter is used to reduce blemishes, smooth skin, and reduce shine on skin. So if I grab this filter here, it doesn't do too much at first, but it is applying something right off the bat. You don't have to mask it in selectively to apply it to your frame. So in the skin retouching, we have these different sliders here. We have our blemishes, our smoothing, we have shine, evenness, and then we have the skin color area. So there's two different ways I like to use the skin retouching, and the first way is to not use the skin color grabber, and that's just to modify these. And then the second way is to actually grab your skin color and then modify after. So let's do the first way first. So let's just zoom in here to her face. And this blemish slider 
this is basically going to remove the blemishes or imperfections in her face. So if I pull this up and I pull it back, you can see it's trying to go in there and remove all of those, uh, all the acne, all of the different imperfections on her skin with this one slider. And then we have smoothing here, which is going to smooth the skin. It's basically going to act like a foundation. And so if I pull up on this, you can see it's really kind of smoothing things out and kind of assisting that blemish slider in really digging away at all of the imperfections and the blemishes here. And then we have this shine slider, which if you have kind of overly bright highlights on a face or you were shooting in a studio like this shot, for example, I can pull up on this shine slider and it's really, really subtle, but it's kind of right in here. And let's actually just pull the smoothing down and maybe the blemishes. And so if I pull down on the shine and pull up on it, it's really, really subtle, but it's basically trying to remove some of this shine from her face right there. And then we have evenness. So the evenness is basically going to modify any color cast you have on your shot. So if I pull up on the evenness here, it's going to kind of warm it up a little bit, bring a little bit more of that natural color into the skin. And so let's reset this here. And the second way that I like to retouch is to use the skin color grabber. So I'll just click on this. I'll grab kind of a, a neutral skin tone on her face, maybe like right here. And now since I'm targeting that skin tone, I can go in here and if I pull up on my blemish slider, it's going to modify it a bit more because now we're actually targeting a specific color to apply this skin retouching filter to. So just keep in mind that you're gonna get two different looks when you have your skin color set to default and your skin color chosen. So um, nothing crazy about the different looks, but it does add a different look onto your skin retouching. So for this particular portrait, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just gonna pull up on this blemish slider a bit. And then I'm gonna pull up on the smoothing probably about right there, just so I can give you guys a better idea of how to use it. Um, the skin retouching is kind of all personal preference. Really, if you want to add a ton of it, it's up to you. If you want to add none at all, completely up to you. Uh, it's kind of one of those artsy things that it's uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. If you want to really just smooth out the skin completely until it looks, you know, like airbrushed, that's fine. If you want to leave it natural and add detail onto it, that's completely up to you as well. So it's really just kind of personal preference with the skin retouching. I'm just gonna pull it up quite a bit just so you guys can see it. And then I'll pull up on the shine all the way to remove any of that shine. There's a little bit in her nose and kind of in this area as well. And then let's pull up on the evenness just a hair like that. And so with this skin retouching filter, we're actually applying this to the entire shot. So we only want this applied to basically her skin. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna hit B on my keyboard. And what I typically do here is I'll zoom in to her face. I'll have my uh, masking brush selected, set to paint out. I'll go up to my opacity. I'll make sure that the opacity is at 100 and the feathering is at 100. And then I'm just going to paint this out from her eyes and anywhere else that I want there to be detail. And one thing you could do, actually, I'm just going to reset this mask. So I'm just going to reset this mask. And one thing that you could do to save you a little bit of time is just invert this mask. So invert the skin retouching mask so that's not applied anywhere. Switch your brush to paint in so that it's, there's the plus inside of it. And now just brush this in where you want it. And that might save you a little bit more time than just removing it selectively. So now we can just kind of paint this on selectively onto our model here and paint it into all the spots that we want to be retouched. Here we go. And let's just pull up on these blemishes a bit more and smoothing quite a bit. So now if I turn this filter off and on, you can see it does a uh, pretty good job of just going in there and smoothing out all of the skin and the details on her face so that we don't have as many imperfections and blemishes. And this is a really kind of a poor example to show you guys. She doesn't have a ton of acne or imperfections or things like that. But um, you can see kind of the power of the skin retouching filter. And with skin retouching, I would definitely recommend uh, doing what I just did and masking it out. 
Uh, you really don't want the skin retouching applied everywhere on your portrait because it could add different colors or kind of some softness to areas that you want some detail. So definitely apply it selectively, kind of like we did with the sharpening filter, and you'll be good to go. All right, so we'll move on here to the next filter. We're going to add a filter and move on to split tone. This filter applies a duotone style effect by using a gradient map that tints the dark and light portions of the photo in different hues. This can be used to age a photo and give it a, an antique or vintage look. So we'll click on split tone here. And split toning is basically taking your highlights and your shadows and you're applying different color tints to them. So it's a really, really, really powerful tool, especially if you're using it to correct color on your photographs. So in split toning, we have our highlights and our shadows here. So you can see that with our highlights, we already have a color chosen here and it's applied the that kind of color to our highlights. So if I turn the split toning off and back on, pretty subtle, but you can see it does cool the photograph down a bit. So just to give you guys a better idea of what, that, what that's doing, let's just click on this color here and we can pick a color. Let's just drag it up to kind of a bright red. Let's go really bright red. And one thing with this colors tab area, once you click on this, you can actually use these different tabs to go in here to different color areas. So just keep that in mind. I know some of you asked about uh, these tabs in here. So yeah, you can just use these tabs here to switch between different color palettes. Um, and then down here, you can actually use this to brighten or darken, basically add in gray to your colors. So now we have this really bright red on our photograph here. And we can go down here to our hue, so we can modify the actual hue of that color. So we could change it to, let's say, blue or whatever hue we want. I'm just going to double click it to reset it. And then I'm going to go back and bring it to another red. Sorry about that. OK, so the amount slider is going to allow us to either add in a bunch of that color or remove it from our shot. So if I pull up on the amount, you can see it's bringing in a ton of that red into the highlights in my photograph. If I pull back on it, it's removing that red. So I can use this amount slider to kind of fine tune how much of that color is being applied. Then we have the balance slider. Now the balance slider is basically the balance between the highlight color and the shadow color. So if you have the slider in between here, and this is your shadows and your highlights, whatever which way you go, that's going to be the stronger tint on your photograph. So if I go all the way to the left here, and I pull up on my amount on my blues all the way, we'll just pull up on the amounts on both. So the amount on my highlights and my shadows is all the way to 100. So if I have my balance to the left, it's going to be a lot more blue because my shadows are blue tinted. And then if I pull it to the right, it's going to be a lot more red because my highlights are red. So the left is your shadow balance and the right is your highlight balance. And if you want them kind of perfectly uh, melted together, you can just put your balance right in between, right in the middle. So same thing for your highlights. If you want to mod modify your shadow tone, tint, you can click on this color. Let's just bring it to kind of a green. And you can see in here that the shadow tones, if I turn this off, these are kind of my shadowy tones on my shot. So if I turn on the split toning filter and I modify this amount, you can see it modifies that shadowy uh, tint on my photograph because these are my shadow tones. So I'm actually just going to click warm here just to kind of go to a default so we don't have that crazy color. And then we have mode down here. And then we have mode down here. So this mode is basically the blend mode that you're using for your shot. There's basically four that you should keep in mind whenever you're using split tone. There's normal, there's color, there's multiply, and then there's screen. So normal is going to add this kind of faded look onto your shot. It's going to look kind of vintagey. So if I turn this off and on, you can see it brings in that fade. And then we have color, which is going to apply the split tone strictly to the colors within your photo. So you don't have that fade. And it's a little bit subtle. Let's just pull up on the amount so you can see it. So that it just applies it to the color. And then we have multiply, which is going to darken your image by one stop. And then we have screen, which is going to brighten it by one stop. So I would recommend using those four, your normal, your color, your multiply, and your screen. And that will work really good for um, kind of blending those onto your photograph in different ways. Especially if you have an underexposed photograph, you could go in here and use the split tone set to screen, and it'll kind of brighten it up. Or if you have an overexposed image and it's pretty bright, you could go in here to your split toning and you could choose multiply, and that'll dim it down a bit and kind of crush those really bright highlights. 
And with the split tone filter, if you ever get into trouble using this normal mode and you kind of get a little bit too much fade on your colors in, in here, so let's just modify these colors kind of crazy for a second. If you ever get too kind of crazy with the fade in here, like this, I know this is pretty intense, but just to give you an idea of how to use it a bit better, uh, so let's say you get into a situation like this and you're like, oh my god, uh, this is too much fade onto my photograph. Anytime you have fade and you want the fade to go away, use the overlay or the soft light blending mode. So if I have my photo like this and I go into my blending options, I'll go into my mode and now to remove this fade and strictly just kind of bring the color onto my shot, it's going to bring in some contrast, but it's going to remove the fade. I can head down to overlay or soft light and now watch as I click on one. It immediately will take that fade away from your photograph because it's going to apply that filter to your shot using contrast. So if I turn this off and on, that's with this really cranked up really high and my mode at soft light. So normal, tons of fade, go down, overlay. Normal, soft light. And then you can kind of always modify these to either remove that. You can make it less cool. Modify the balance. So yeah, those are a couple of nice blending modes to use with the split tone filter. So let's move on to the next filter and we'll go to sun flare. It's golden hour anytime with the sun flare filter. You can add realistic sun stars, sun flares, and bokeh to your afternoon shots. It's powered by real photographs from renowned photographer and educator Matt Kleskowski. So if I click on this, you can see it immediately brings a little bit of sun onto my shot. So in the Sunflare filter, it's really easy to use. We just click our type. So we either have Bokeh, we have Sunflare, and we have Sunstar. So Bokeh, I would recommend using that for some portraits. It's a really awesome tool for bringing in those kind of glowy uh, Bokeh looks onto your photograph. And then we have Sunflare, which I would recommend for landscapes and portraits. You can kind of bring that uh, Sunflare that comes in from the top left or top right corner, you can use that in this category. And then we have Sun Star. So this is going to bring an actual Sun Star onto your shot. So if you do have one of those shots where you're shooting a landscape and you have a situation where you're shooting right into the sun, you can really uh, emphasize that Sun Star by adding uh, your own onto the photo. So let's just start here. I'm actually not going to use this bokeh on this particular shot, but I'm actually going to use the Sun Flare filter itself. So in the Sunflare filter, you can see that just by clicking on it, it brings a little bit of sun overlay onto the shot. And then if we go into texture here, we can choose our different Sunflare textures. Now, I know this shot doesn't look realistic with any of these because the sun is right in the middle, but it does give you an idea of what it does onto your frame. And Actually, let's just zoom to a photograph that we could use this on. We'll just zoom right here. So if we have this photograph here, and hit the backslash scanner keyboard, nothing really happening to the shot, just kind of a simple develop look. But if we add a filter and we add the Sunflare filter, immediately we have a little bit more life on our photograph. So if I turn this off and on here, just by bringing that light in, we can make it seem like there was an actual Sunflare that day. So I can go into these textures here, and you can see that they're really, really powerful flavors to add onto your photo, especially that one. I really like that, and one thing you can do with the sun flare is you can mask this out from people. So if I hit B on my keyboard to grab my masking brush, I'll hold down Shift, hit X on my keyboard. That'll switch my mode from paint in to paint out. And then I'll just lower my opacity a little bit. And then I'll just paint this out from her. So then it looks like the sun flare is kind of coming in as a backlight, and it's not actually covering up our model. So if I turn this off and on now, just acts as sort of a, a nice soft light coming in from the corner and adds a nice bit of life onto the shot. So let's go back to that one shot we were looking at here.
And so with this particular photo, I would recommend using a sun star because we have the flare actually, or there is no flare on this shot, but the flare would look unrealistic because we know the sun is right in the middle. So I'll just go into my texture here, or my type. I'll go down to sun star. And yeah, already we can see that it's making a nice sun star on our shot. So if you're going to use the sun star type, make sure that you have a photograph that uh, would look good with it. The sun flare filter and also the weather filter are those kind of filters that they need a particular shot to be applied to. So with the sun flare filter, if you do decide that you have a, a shot that this works on and you apply your sun star, uh, you can modify the look of it by heading down here to your mount slider. So if you want it uh, less or more on your shot, you can use this to modify that. Then we have tone and color. So this is going to modify the brightness of the entire sun star, bokeh, or sun flare. So I can pull this down. I can brighten it like that. I can add in more saturation to it to bring more vibrance into the overlay. And then I can modify the actual color by just modifying this hue. So if I want it blue, for example, or green, I can switch the color really easily. And then we have transform. So this little icon right here, I can click on this, and I can actually move the sun flare or star or bokeh around my frame. So I'm just going to position this kind of right in the middle there, just like that. And then I have scale, so I can make this larger. I can make it smaller. And then I can use these transform tools to either rotate it, I can flip it, I can flip it horizontally, and I'm going to leave fit to canvas on. I typically don't ever modify that. And then we have the sunshine filter basically built right into our sun flare filter. And the sunshine filter is the next filter on our list, but just for now, the sunshine filter is going to brighten up your midtones and your highlights, and it's going to darken your shadows and your blacks. So by darkening up our shadows and our blacks and brightening up our midtones and our highlights, we're going to bring a sunshine look onto the frame. So if I pull up on my amount, and I pull it back down. You can see it darkens these areas, the darker areas on my shot, but it brightens up these mid-tone highlight areas in the middle. And in the sunshine filter, I can modify the warmth to either heat it up or cool it down. I can bring in more color with the saturation slider. And then I can bring in a fade with this little fade slider. So if I wanted more of a vintage sort of look or kind of an overexposed high key look, I can use this fade slider. So now with the sun flare filter, if I turn this off and on, it adds a nice bit of, it helps to liven up the shot by kind of emphasizing that sun right in the middle. So let's move on to the next photograph here. I'll add a filter and we'll move on to the sunshine filter. So this filter increases the appearance of sunshine. It makes a flat cloudy, cloudy day more vivid. So basically, the sunshine filter takes your photograph and it increases the brightness of the highlights and the midtones and it darkens your shadows and blacks, which emulates a sunshine look on your photo. So if I turn the sunshine filter off and on, you can see it's doing just that. It's brightening this area in here, but it's darkening this darker area in my foreground. So with the sunshine filter, there's a few different sliders in here. The amount slider is basically controlling how much of that sunshine we add in to our shot. The warmth is going to be your color temperature. So if I want to warm this up, I can make it a little bit more warm or I could cool it down. And then we have saturation, which is going to increase the vibrance of the colors within your shot. So I could desaturate this sunshine filter or I could increase it quite a bit. And then we also have glow down here. Now glow is basically going to bring in a glowy look. It's gonna bring in that halo-y soft blurred look. So if I pull this up all the way, you can see I have a really, really strong kind of blur onto my frame. So with the sunshine filter, I would recommend applying it selectively. Uh, you could use it to kind of bring out your foreground or enhance a background. One thing you could do with this photograph is we could actually just kind of bring out some of the light in our foreground here by using this sunshine filter. So let's just pull up on the amount quite a bit. We'll just pull it up all the way to 100. We'll increase the warmth quite a bit, probably right there. And then I'll pull up on the saturation a ton. So it's really kind of vibrant right there. And then I'm going to pull up on the glow quite a bit as well. Just about right there. 
And then I'm going to hit M on my keyboard. That's going to grab me my masking bug. And I'm using my masking bug to remove this from the top half of my frame. So if I just drop this down on the horizon line here, it's protecting the top area, but it's applied to the bottom. So now I can just pull this down a little bit, and I'll just feather it. And then if I turn this off and on here, see how we brought in kind of a soft, uh, sunshiny glow to our foreground on the water? And we haven't done anything to this shot uh, as far as the foundational looks. So if I hit the backslash key on my keyboard, that's literally the only thing we've done to this photograph. So if we want to really just kind of bring some flavor into this photograph, I could add another filter. I could add the curves filter. And if you're not familiar with the tone curve, check out our previous video where we go through it in its entirety. I'll add the curves filter. And then I'll just bring in a little bit of a fade, kind of by pulling this up to the left. And then we'll just add in some stark contrast like that. Boost the midtones a hair. Maybe a little bit more contrast. And now if I hit the undo key on my effects area, you can see just by those two filters, we've already made a much more interesting photograph. And I really love what the sunshine does to this shot. It brings in that sunshiny kind of glow to the water. And it's a really, really awesome filter, especially if you're using it for days like this where you actually do have some sunshine going on. It can really kind of top off the flavor in your photo. So let's move on to the next filter here. And we have textures. So the textures filter places a texture over the photo to add a stylized look and is similar to the borders filter in scope and functionality. So if I click on textures here, um, pretty similar to the borders filter, we have our category. So we choose which category we want to pull different textures from. And if you've added any textures on your own, you will see those in the bottom of this list at the bottom of my textures here. So you can see that I've imported all of these into Photo Raw. And so once you click on a category, I'll just click on metal, for example. Now I can go into my texture and I have all of the different textures for that category. So let's just click on grunge vignette. I really like that. And then once I've chosen the texture, I can modify the mode. So this is similar to the different modes we were using in uh, split toning and kind of similar to the other modes we were using. And normal and subtle are probably my recommended ones. Subtle I'd probably use majority of the time. Then we have lighter, which is going to lighten up or brighten up your texture on the frame. And then we have darken, which is going to act like multiply, and it's going to darken it. And then we have replace, which is going to replace the photograph completely. And the reason it's a little bit faded right here, or we can see through it, is because the opacity is at 80. So if I pull this all the way up to 100, now it's completely replacing the photograph. So let's just go back down here. I'll use Subtle. And now we have this Subtle Texture. So now that we've applied our, our texture and we've got the one we want, we can go down here to Tone and Color. We can modify the look of our texture. So if we want a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, we can modify that with this slider. I can bring in more color with the saturation slider. And I can actually adjust the hue with this slider here. So I can make it a little more red or maybe even a little more blue, kind of depending on the photograph. And then I have invert. So if I want to switch the whites to blacks and the blacks to white, I can click that and it will invert everything on the shot. So now I've switched the, uh, or basically flipped this texture and inverted it so the um, whites are opposite. I'll just click that to turn it off. And then if I want to colorize this texture, I can click colorize. And so now I can use either this color dropper to grab a color to apply. That's applying that yellow. Or I can just click on the color itself. I can go in here to these different color tabs and choose a color. Let's just choose blue, for example. And now that I've chosen my color, I can modify the hue. So I can switch the color that I'm colorizing it with. I can modify the amount so it's not so intense. And then below that, I can actually increase the size of this texture. And then I can use these to transform it. So I can flip with this one. I can flip vertically with this one. Or sorry, I can rotate with this first one. Sorry, rotate, flip, and then flip horizontally. So let's just use replace and I can show you. So flip or rotate, sorry, flip. 
And let's just head up here and I'll reset this texture here. And one thing you can do with textures is if you go in here to your mode and you choose replace and you increase the opacity all the way to 100, what you can do now is you can actually go up to your blending options for this filter and you can use these blending options now to modify your filter. So if you want to use, let's say, overlay or soft light or something like that, you can actually use these different blend modes in here and they're being applied to this entirely um, applied uh, texture right there because it's on the mode replace and we're not seeing through it at all. So you can actually use these blend modes now with that texture. So in the textures filter, if you want to see all of the different preset preloaded textures, just click on this more option and you have all of these different textures you, you can choose from. And one of my all time favorites are these two grunge vignette dark and grunge vignette light. I'm just going to use grunge vignette dark. And I'm actually going to rotate this like that. And so with this textures filter, you can see that this is applied onto the subject here. But let's say we want to kind of mask this out and protect our subject. An easy way to do that is to hit M on your keyboard. That is going to grab me my masking bug. And then I'm going to head up to my shape. I'm going to make sure that center is chosen. Center is basically protecting the inside areas of my mask. So if I want to protect anything on the inside, I can use shape, center. Then I'll just drop this down. I'll make this a bit smaller with the solid edges. And then I'll use my perforated edges to kind of feather it out. And now I'm protecting this area on my sunflower so that the, filter, the texture is not being applied on top of it. And obviously you can kind of come in here and you know make it more believable and more natural. But that's a good way to selectively apply the texture so that it's not covering up important details within your frame. All right, so next filter here, we'll go down to Tone Enhancer. So the Tone Enhancer controls the brightness and contrast or tone of the photo and lets you recover detail in the highlights and shadows and adjust the white or black point. So if I click on Tone Enhancer, it's not actually going to do anything to my shot until I start modifying it. So Tone Enhancer has a lot of the similar uh, sliders that you see inside of the Develop tab. Except for with the Tone Enhancer, we can apply these and we can use them selectively. We can mask them out. We can modify the opacity. We can use blend modes. So the Tone Enhancer is a really powerful tool for controlling the tones in your shot. So in the Tone Enhancer, we have our tone area. So we can modify the exposure. We can modify the contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, things like that. And one thing I would recommend doing with the Tone Enhancer filter is using your uh, J key on your keyboard, which is going to show you your clipping warnings. So if I hold down J on my keyboard, it's going to show me all of the true white and true black without any detail in my shot. So I know that this area up top here is completely blown out. So I can use the exposure slider to kind of remove some of those true white areas like that. And then I could pull up on my shadow tones. I'll lower the contrast a little bit. Oops. And if I turn this off and on, I've dimmed down that area a little bit so I don't have any blown out whites on the frame. So you can use the Tone Enhancer to really just kind of come in and modify the luminance and the tones in your shot. Uh, a couple things to keep in mind when you're using the Tone Enhancer are these three sliders here, this compression, detail, and clarity. So compression is going to act like an HDR slider. Uh, basically, it's going to take your photograph and it's going to manipulate the highlights and shadow tones that everything kind of cohesively uh, melds together. So by looking at this shot, we can see that the shadow tones are really, really dark and the highlights are really, really bright. So if I pull up on the compression slider, you can see it evens everything out. It basically compresses the frame into one shot, or basically it takes this photo and it modifies the shadow tones, the highlights, the midtones, uh, across the entire shot so that we can see the image like we did in real life. It's basically your HDR slider on your Tone Enhancer. And then we have Detail and Clarity. So the Detail slider is going to incorporate basically all of the contrast and texture back into the frame. It's a pretty strong slider, so I would use it uh, kind of sparingly. And then we have Detail and or clarity sorry and clarity is going to increase the clarity or the kind of small finer micro contrast in your shot so if i pull up on that you can see it basically increases the 
texture and clarity within the frame. And below that we have curves. So I'm actually just going to head up and I'll turn or I'll reset this. And so below that we have our curves area. And I'm not going to go too much into the curves filter uh, right now because we went into it in the last video. So if you do want to watch the last video, I put a link to it right there. And so the, the tone curve is basically allowing you to modify all of the different tones in your shot from your black point, which is this far left bottom area, all the way up to your whites, which is the top right of this graph. So using this tone curve, you can always go in and modify a bunch of the different areas on your shot. One thing I would recommend using with the tone curve are using these different RGB channels. So with these, you can actually modify your red tones, your green tones, and your blue tones specifically. So for example, if you want to modify your red tones, and let's say put more reds into your shadows, I can drop a point in the middle, and I'll increase the reds in my shadow tones, and you can see it'll bring in red into those shadowy areas because I'm pulling up on the red area of my tone curve. Again, if you want to know more about the tone curve, check out our last uh, Power Filters video, part two, where we go into the tone curve uh, pretty extensively. All right, so let's move on to the next filter, and I'll add a filter, and we have vignette now. So the vignette filter creates flexible vignettes which focus a viewer's eye towards the center of the photo by darkening the edges of the frame. So I'll just click on vignette. And vignette is actually one of those filters that doesn't apply anything right off the bat. You actually have to modify this filter to see anything done to your shot. And with the vignette filter, I typically don't use any of these sliders first. I use a preset and then I go in and modify. And one of my favorite presets is this big softy preset in here. So I'll just click on this, and this tends to work great on pretty much any shot you're adding a vignette to. It's pretty mellow, so if I turn this off and on, you can see it just darkens these areas around the edges and the corners of my photo so that we're really just kind of tuned into the middle area where our subject is, and all these other areas are kind of toned down a bit. So now that we've chosen a preset, I can actually modify these sliders now. So my brightness is at negative 100 now, but if I bring it up, you can see it removes some of that darkness from the edges and it's not so vignetting. I'm just going to turn that to zero and then we have size down here which is going to determine how much that vignette kind of lays over the middle of your frame so the the lower the size the smaller this center area is going to be and then the higher the size the less you're going to see it around your shot and then we have feathering so if I pull my feathering all the way down to zero you can see that it removes all of the feathering, and now I just have this sort of James Bondy oval around my shot. So the feathering is basically providing that kind of softness to the edge so that it blends in naturally with the photo. I typically keep this all the way up, but if you're making a vintage look or something like that, you can pull this down to zero. Let's pull it all the way up. And then we have roundness. So I guess I could pull this down to, the, to show you guys roundness. And roundness is basically the ovalness or the roundness of the filter. So if I pull this down, it's going to turn it into a square. If I pull this all the way up, it's going to turn it into a circle. So I have negative 100 being a square, and I have 100 being a circle. And right kind of in the center is this oval look right there. That's kind of the go-to vignette shot. And then I can pull up my feathering here, and now I have that sort of big softy vignette again. And down here we have our type. So this is going to determine how our vignette is blended into our shot. Normal is going to be a little bit darker. Subtle is going to be pretty mild. Soft is going to be uh, blended in by creating contrast. So if I go up to subtle, you can see it's more of an overlay uh, vignette on the, on the photograph. And then if I choose soft, you can see it's blending it in with a bit more harsher contrast. And then if I want to use priority, this is going to protect my highlights in my frame. So if I want to protect some of these highlighted areas on the corners or the edges of my shot, I can use this priority type. And that will kind of protect those highlights from being covered with the vignette. And then we have this option here, this little icon there. If I click on this, I can move my vignette around my photo. So if I have my subject up in this corner, for example, I can move my vignette there and then I could kind of tone down these areas to the left of it. I'm just going to leave this right in the middle there, just like that. And if you want to create a white vignette, just modify the brightness slider. So 
Uh, if we see that our negative 100 is making our vignette completely dark, well, let's pull it all the way up to 100. And now we have that kind of white glow vignette that we can use on our photograph instead. So if you want it to be white, pull the brightness to 100. And if you want it to be dark, pull the brightness all the way to negative 100. And then you can just kind of modify these to follow. Remember, size is how big or small your vignette is. Feathering is the softness to the edge. Roundness is whether you want it to be a square, rectangle, or a circle. And then highlights, you can actually use this to protect your highlights on your shot. So let's feather this quite a bit. And then if we want to bring in some of these highlights, let's say we have these highlights on our hair, I could just pull up on this highlight slider, and that will protect those highlights on my photograph. And one thing you could do in the vignette filters, you could use these other presets. So just click on this more. And then there's all these other awesome presets that you can use for your photograph. And one of my favorites here is this black edges, especially if you're, you're modifying sort of a vintage or uh, aged photograph, you can use this um, black edges preset. And then let's go in here, I'll add a texture. We'll make it grunge. And there we go. Now I have a vintage aged look by just using that uh, preset in my vignette and then this texture. So that's the vignette filter, a awesome filter for pretty much any photograph where you're looking to dim down those edges and really hone in on the subject or whatever you're shooting on your shot. All right, so second to last filter here, we'll add filter and we have the vintage filter. So the vintage filter is for adding an aged vintage look reminiscent of films and papers from the mid to late 20th century. So if I click on vintage, it brings on kind of a vintage cool look automatically and that's its default look. So with the vintage filter, basically you have your color here. So you choose which color you want. Um, some of them are pretty crazy, like the split pea and this earth, but I'll show you a good trick to kind of removing all that fade. Um, but once you've kind of picked your color, let's pick oatmeal, then you can kind of go in and choose your uh, strength of it. So we have a mount down here. We can choose how much of that vintage filter is applied. We have saturation, so we can bring on more or less of that uh, oatmeal color. And then we have film grain. So if I zoom in here, I can go into my film grain. I can pull up on the amount. Let's do all the way up. I'll actually pull down on the saturation. And so now if I pull on this amount, you can see it's pretty subtle, but it does add in kind of a nice bit of uh, film grain onto the shot. So with the vintage filter, I'm just going to reset this. And let's say you're going in here and you've chosen your preset color. Let's say you've chosen split P. Well, with split P, what are you going to do with split P? There's nothing you can add this onto that's going to make it look great. I don't even know why this is in here. But I do know that with this vintage filter, when you apply the soft light or overlay blend mode to it, it brings on an entire new world of possibilities. So even with the split tone or the split P color, watch as I click on the blending options and I'll go into my mode and I'll head down to soft light. So if I turn this off and on, see that actually looks really good on the shot. It brings in warmth to our shot, um, warms the scene up, brings in a little bit of uh, tonal contrast. So I really like what this is doing to the photograph and that's just by using that soft light blend mode on that spit, uh, split P color. So now that I've chosen the soft light blend mode, now watch as I go over all of these different colors. And even lavender is a lot less intense than it was because I'm using that soft light blend mode. And another one you could also use is you could head down in here and you could choose hue. Now the hue one it's not going to work on all of these different colors, but it's going to work on some of these warmer colors, for example, oatmeal. I really like what that does to incorporate just a lot of kind of nice, warm, and uh, pink kind of hazy color onto the shot. And then we can bring in a little bit more of that saturation. And then we got even more pink coming into the frame. So playing with these colors, you can get a really cool idea of what they do to your shot just by using a blend mode and then kind of hovering over them. Uh, you could also head down here and you could use, uh, let's see here, color. The color blend mode is awesome because it's not actually going to modify any of the tones in your shot. 
So basically you're protecting all of the luminance or the contrast, your highlights and your midtones, but you're applying this vintage filter strictly to the, the color or the saturation. Wherever it has gray in your shot, this is where that vintage filter is going to be applied to. So now if I go over to these different colors here, you can see it keeps the color, but it removes any sort of modification. See right there, it's removing that haze. It removes any sort of modification to the luminance or the tonal values of the shot. So where split P was a kind of faded look, now if I go down to color, it's just taking the color from that split P uh, vintage filter and applying it, and it's actually protecting all of the other areas on my shot. So color is a good one. Hue, uh, any either lighten or overlay are both really good ones. Overlay is going to be more contrasted than soft light is going to be. And with hue, you may get these areas in here where you get these kind of sharp edges. And that's because the hue blend mode is basically taking your vintage filter and it's applying it to the, uh, the color, the shades of the color, if you will. So in our modes here, the color blend mode is applying this to wherever it has gray. Anywhere that's saturated with color is going to get this vintage filter. Whereas if I go up to hue, this is going to be applied to the shades of the color. And you can see that these different shades of color in here get different looks from that filter because they're different hues of color. So uh, a couple things you could use for this again are the overlay, soft light, and you could also use either hue or color. All right, last filter here. Let's head down and we have weather. So turn that cloudy day into a rainstorm, blizzard, or just a little fog with the weather filter. So the weather filter is an all new filter to 2020. A uh, really popular filter, especially with overcast photographs. Um, now with the weather filter, I would recommend kind of keeping an eye on whatever photograph you apply it to. I wouldn't recommend applying it to like a sunny day or a bright day where you have a bunch of contrast. You really want sort of a, a weathery day, uh, a storm looking day. Uh, if you will, because if you apply this to a shot that doesn't need it, it's going to look pretty wonky. So let's add weather. And when you add the weather filter, it doesn't do anything at first. You first actually have to pick your texture. So in here we have our texture and we can just hover down and we can choose any of these. The first four are snow, the first five rather, and then we have none. And then it's all rain until we hit snow heavy and snow light. Now the snow heavy and snow light are pretty unrealistic textures. I don't think they should they don't really look that great, but the first five here are really awesome snow textures, especially accumulation and catch one on your tongue. I really like catch one on your tongue. And so once you've chosen your precipitation texture, now you can go into your opacity and I'm just going to pull that up to a hundred. And once you've modified the opacity, that's either how light or how dark you have it in your shot. Then we have scale. So if my scale is a little bit off, I can pull this up to um, let's say it's a zoom shot that I'm taking. I can kind of pull up this scale to make it seem like it's a little more zoomed in or I can pull it out if it's a wide angle like this, for example. And then if I want to uh, kind of transform the uh, overlay, I can rotate it. I can flip it. And then we have fog down here. So the fog is basically going to incorporate a fade onto whatever area you want. So first for the fog, I would recommend choosing your position. So it'll tell you your position in here and it's a little bit confusing, but basically the blue is where the fog is being applied to. So I'm going to choose top half fast or actually top third fast. There we go. And the reason I want top third fast is because that's going to take this top third of the shot, kind of this top area, and it's going to incorporate that fade up there. And the reason I want that is because we already sort of have a faded look up there anyway. So watch as I go to my amount and I pull this up. You can see it's bringing in a fade to the top third of my photograph. And then depending on this position, I can uh, kind of differentiate where that's applied on the photo. I'm going to go to top third fast again. And then we have distance. So this is the distance between the top and the bottom or the left and the right. And then the transition is basically, or the rotation is uh, wherever it's being rotated. So if you want it a little bit rotated, you could use that. And then we have transition, which is the feathering of the fog. So if I wanted a little more feathered, I could pull up on that. And then I could modify the amount 
and the distance. Just like that. So now if I turn this weather filter off and on, you can see it brings on a nice bit of snow onto the photograph. Now one thing I'm going to do here with this photograph that I like to do uh, with the weather filter is I like to use black and white with the weather filter. And I think I like to do that because it kind of takes away from uh, the realism aspect of it. It's like, oh, if there's no colors in here, then I can't really judge it on if it's too bright or whatever that may be. So one thing I would recommend doing if you are using the weather filter on a landscape is to try it with black and white. So let's add a filter and I'll just use a black and white and I'll just use red. And already, if I turn this weather filter off and on, it does add in a ton onto the shot. I really like what that's doing to the frame. And one thing we could do into this weather filter is we could always modify the opacity. And we could always modify the texture. So let's see if accumulation works better. I actually do kind of like accumulation a little bit better. And then I think this photo is a little bit too strong, so I'm actually just going to pull back. And let's use a, well, I think that looks pretty good. I mean, hit the backslash key on our keyboard. Let's go back to the effects tab. So if we turn the effects off and on, just by using two filters, you know, we've really brought in that weathery look onto your shot. And it does look good in uh, color too. So if we do add a filter, we could actually incorporate, let's add a vintage filter. And let's use that soft light. Boom. So now with our vintage filter, set the soft light, and our weather filter, we've used two of the filters that we just went over. And if I turn these off and on, I really like what they're doing to the frame. I especially like that kind of glow on the top of the shot that it's bringing in from that faded uh, fog. So that the, that's the weather filter, a really awesome tool for incorporating texture and weather overlays onto your frame. And I would recommend using it on sort of any landscape shot that uh, is overcast or it looks like there was an actual storm there. I wouldn't recommend it on uh, portraits or anything where it's shot on a bright sunny day or it's inside because if you add a weather filter to an inside shot, it's immediately going to look pretty sad. So just keep in mind that the weather filter is um, one of those filters that it, 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 kinda, it can kind of make or break your photo. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the series and learned a lot about filters and how you can use them on your photographs. If you like the series and like the video, please subscribe to our channel and stay updated whenever we drop new content and tip and trick videos for you guys. Have a great rest of your week. Thanks so much for watching. Peace.